Welcome to God's Truth. I'm Dr. D. Todd Harrison as we continue our study this year on the New Testament, studying the life and the teachings and the miracles and the prophecies of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. And of that Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, I testify as one of his witnesses that he lives today. He conquered death, hell, and the grave. He sits at the right hand of the Heavenly Father in splendor, majesty, and glory. Let's study today his life. Let's study his teachings. And let's worship the Lord this day. Okay, well, let's take a look here. We'll be looking today at Mar at uh, Matthew 11 through 12 and Luke chapter 11 as well. Uh, some of these stories uh, have uh, been in the previous week, so some of them will skip over uh, this time as we've looked at them in some of the other Gospels. We've talked before that these are the synoptic Gospels, Matthew, Mark, and Luke. And so they often repeat the same stories and just tell them slightly different but based on their own perspective and based on the underlying uh, sources that they were uh, working with. Matthew uh, chapter 11, let's first look at verses 2 through 6. And we read, Now when John had heard, so this John the Baptist, he's now in prison because he had uh, testified that the wicked, that Herod was committing wickedness in um, you know, taking his brother's wife unto himself. Uh, now when they, John had heard in the prison the works of Christ, he sent two of his disciples and said unto him, Art thou he that should come, or do we look for another? Now there's two ways to interpret this story, and we just don't know which one is the correct one. A, or number one, He's trying, he's trying to still get his disciples to leave following him as he knows he's going to be killed at any time. And he's trying to point them towards Jesus, and he wants them, he wants them to gain a testimony of Jesus Christ. Others will interpret that here, John, who even though he'd been a faithful witness of Jesus Christ, he's the one that baptized Jesus Christ. Here he is in prison, uh, ready to be killed at any time. That even the great ones, even the great prophets at times can can waver and they, they have doubts at times uh, concerning their own testimony. And that maybe he needed some reinforcement here in prison. That indeed he uh, this uh, Christ that he bore witness of, the, his second cousin Jesus, uh, was indeed the, the savior of the world. And so he, uh, either interpretation, uh, uh, he sends his disciples there to Christ. And um, in the other Gospels, we see that Jesus starts performing miracles in front of them. And then, they, and then he sends them to go back and tell John what you've seen. Here, it seems to be, he just kind of tells them, right? And said in, the, um, in verse 4, Jesus answered and said unto them, Go and show John again those things which you do hear and see. So they see a little bit. They also hear from the witnesses of those who have been healed and so forth. Go and tell John what you have seen and heard. The blind receive their sight, and the lame walk. The lepers are cleansed, and the deaf hear. The dead are raised up, and the poor have the gospel preached to them. By, come and buy the gospel without uh, money, without uh, the purse, right? And blessed is he whosoever shall not be offended in me, right? We know from Matthew 10, 32, that he that confess, confesseth me before man, him will I confess before my Father in heaven. But he that's ashamed of the Lord, the Lord will be ashamed of them in the coming judgment of the world. So moving now to 9 through 11. And so he starts, about John, he starts talking about John the Baptist, and he wants to give forward this recommendation that the things that John had taught were true and that he was a true prophet of God. But what, what went she out for to see? A prophet? Yea, I say unto you, and more than a prophet. For this is he, this is the very one, the very prophet of whom it was written in, uh, in, Malachi, in uh, Malachi here in Isaiah, uh, that uh, Malachi 3, 1, Behold, I send my messenger before thy face, which shall prepare thy way before thee. Verily I say unto you, among them that are born of woman, there hath not risen a greater than John the Baptist, 
notwithstanding he that is least in the kingdom of heaven is greater than he. Get that? He that barely makes it into the kingdom of heaven will be greater than a prophet. What a wonderful uh, blessing and promise that is. Let's look at 18 through 30. For John came neither eating nor drinking. He was out there fasting and eating uh, locusts and wild honey. And they say he hath a devil. <laughs> 19. The Son of Man, Jesus Christ, came eating and drinking. And they say, Behold, a drunk man and a wine bibber, a friend of publicans and harlots or prostitutes. Remember, oftentimes sinners here in the New Testament, and you read sinners in the Gospels talking about the prostitutes. So Jesus was always hanging out with the tax collectors and the prostitutes, right? A uh, friend of publicans and prostitutes, but wisdom is justified of her children. Then began he to upbraid the cities where most of his mighty works were done. He performed a lot of miracles in these cities. Now it's time to condemn these cities. They refused to accept him as the Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. It's a choice between blessing or cursing, life or death. They decided cursing, therefore the great Judge is now going to pronounce his curse and the judgment upon these cities who had seen his works but yet rejected him. Woe unto thee. Woe, meaning that, you know, damnation, right? Damnation unto thee, Chorazin. Damnation, condemnation unto thee, Bethsaida. For if the mighty works which were done in you had been done in the Gentile cities of Tyre and Sidon, they would have repented long ago in sackcloth and ashes. But I say unto you, it shall be more tolerable for Tyre and Sidon at the day of judgment than for you. He's uh, more tolerable for the Gentiles who rejected God than for you who were the covenant people and rejected him. And thou, Capernaum, which are exalted unto heaven in your pride and in your uh, uh, self-proclaimed works of righteousness according to the law of Moses, you shall be brought down to hell. For if the mighty works which have been done in thee had been done in Sodom, Sodom and Gomorrah, that God sent that nuclear blast down, destroyed completely Sodom and Gomorrah. For Sodom, it would have remained until this day. If the Sodomites, the Sodomites who became so wicked they wanted to gang rape the angels and with homosexual relations with the angels and rape them. If 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 they became that, you know, if, if they were that wicked that God had to destroy those people, you know, they would have repented. The very ones who were so they get blinded by the angels, but they're so addicted uh, to the sexual addiction to the point that even being blinded by these angels, they're still trying to get to these angels to, to gang rape them. Right. Those very people would have repented had they seen Jesus Christ minister among them and perform these same miracles. But there's the Jewish people who rejected that and crucified their own king and Messiah. But I say unto you that it shall be more tolerable for the land of Sodom in the day of judgment than for thee. At that time, Jesus answered and said, I thank thee, O Father, Lord of heaven and earth, because thou hast hid these things from the wise and prudent and hast revealed them unto babies. Even so, Father, for so it seemeth good in thy sight. All things are delivered unto me and my Father. Jesus Christ was given all power over heaven and earth personally from his Father. And no man knoweth the Son but the Father, right? And neither knoweth any man the Father, saveth the Son, and the he to whomsoever the Son will reveal him. You don't see the Father. You don't have revelation of the Father unless Jesus Christ is there to show him. The Father also never appears unless it is to bear testimony to the Son. This is my beloved Son. Hear him is what the Father says. Likewise, if, the, if someone's going to receive a revelation of the Father, Jesus Christ is there to declare, behold, our beloved Heavenly Father, my Father, and your Father, and my God, and your God. Come unto me, in 28, and everybody knows this one. Come unto me, all ye that labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. 
Take my yoke upon you and learn of me, for I am meek and lowly in heart, and ye shall find rest unto your souls, for my yoke is easy and my burden is light. Moving on to chapter 12 of Matthew, we'll look at 8 through 15. For the Son of Man is Lord even of the Sabbath day. In the first few verses of this, his, his disciples are walking through uh, a field, and uh, it's the Sabbath day, and they start to pluck, uh, uh, they start to pluck with corn, and the Pharisees and the scribes try to attack him and say, you know, hey, you're breaking the Sabbath day, and so Jesus wants to teach that he's above. So they, right? He's the one that gave the law. He can postpone the law and let his disciples eat and save themselves, right? Okay, so then we go on here in verse 8. For the Son of Man is Lord even of the Sabbath day. And when he was departed thence, he went into their synagogue. And behold, there was a man which had his hand withered. And they asked him, saying, Is it lawful to heal on the Sabbath day that they might accuse him? Instead of having the love of of God towards this person and asking Jesus, Jesus, can you come heal this person who has this withered hand? No, they, they want to see him perform this miracle to heal this uh, person so that they could then accuse him of breaking the Sabbath day so they can try to kill him. And he said unto them, what man shall there be among you that shall have one sheep? And if it falls into a pit on the Sabbath day, will he not lay hold on it and lift it out? You know, you can take care of your own sheep. You're going to pull it out of that uh, pit. How much more then is a man better than a sheep? Wherefore, is it lawful to do well on the Sabbath days? Then saith he to the man, stretch forth thine hand. And he stretched it forth, and it was restored whole like as the other. Then the Pharisees went out and held a counsel against him, how they might destroy or kill him. But when Jesus knew it, he withdrew himself from thence, and great multitudes followed him, and he healed them all. And then they say, this is in fulfillment of the prophecy of Isaiah. Behold, my servant whom I've chosen, my beloved, and whom my soul is well pleased, I will put my spirit upon him, and he shall show judgment to the Gentiles. He shall not strive nor cry, neither shall any man hear his voice in the streets. A bruised reed shall he uh, not break, and smoking flax shall he not quench, till he send forth judgment unto victory. And in his name shall the Gentiles trust. Okay, let's look at 22 to 28. Then was brought unto him one possessed with a devil, blind and dumb. And he healed him, insomuch that the blind and dumb both spake and saw. Cured, cured, cured both of them from And all the people were amazed and said, Is not this the son of David? Is this not the Messiah? Only the Messiah would have power to do these kinds of miracles. But when the Pharisees heard it, they said, This fellow does not cast out devils, but by Beelzebub, the prince of the devils. <laughs> and Jesus knew their thoughts. So again, showing his divine omniscience, his all knowing that he could read their thoughts. He hardly ever. Let them come talk to him and start the discussion. He's always showing forth his divine omniscience, his all-knowing, and he reads their hearts and their minds, and he goes and he approaches them. He says, And Jesus knew their thoughts and said unto them, Every kingdom divided against itself is brought to desolation, and every city or house divided against itself shall not stand. And if Satan cast out Satan, he is divided against himself. How then shall his kingdom stand? And if I by Beelzebub, the prince of the devils, cast out devils, by whom do your children cast them out? Therefore they shall be your judges. Now, they did have a lot. They had a lot of demon possession here at this time, uh, preparing to fight against Jesus Christ. So the Jewish rabbis, a lot of them were going out, also trying to perform exorcisms in the name of God and trying to cast out Devil. So here he is saying that, look, your children are doing this. You know that it's possible to cast devils out of people because even your, you know, your children, the children of the rabbis are doing this. Um, and so, uh, but they're doing it by the power of God. If they're doing it by the power of God, then of course, if I'm casting out devils, I'm doing it by that same power, right? 
And therefore, if I'm doing it by the power of God and I declare myself the Messiah, the Son of God, you better believe me. Or else, uh, and then he says here, 30 through, uh, pick up in 30. He that is not with me is against me, and he that gathereth not with me scattereth abroad. Wherefore I say unto you, all manner in, of sin and blasphemy shall be forgiven unto man, but the blasphemy against the Holy Ghost shall not be forgiven man. So they may take my name in vain. They may take my father's name in vain vain jesus said here but if they sin against the holy ghost after receiving the divine witness from the holy ghost who is a revealer of truth and manifests truth and manifests truth from error so that anybody knows truth and know what the true doctrine of god is as they hear it if they then reject that witness that testimony of the holy ghost that's where the sin takes place and it shall not be forgiven unto man and whosoever speaketh a word against the Son of Man, it shall be given, forgiven him. A lot of people take the name of the Lord in vain. It shall be forgiven him or her. But whosoever speaketh against the Holy Ghost, it shall not be forgiven him or her. Neither in this world, neither in the world to come. That's pretty serious uh, penalty there. Either make the tree good and his fruit good. So if you want to be uh, pretend you're good, you better make sure your life is... Uh, and your doctrinal beliefs are in accordance with being good. Or else make the tree corrupt and its fruit corrupt. So if you decide you want to be a corrupt individual, you're entitled to believe whatever corrupt doctrine and corrupt theology you want. For the tree is known by his fruit. Oh, generation of vipers. And we've seen this before. Every time he talks to the Pharisees and the other false religious leaders, he always attacks them, he condemns them, he insults them with the words. He was a master of, of the insult. So here he's calling them generation of vipers. We've seen him call them lots of other things in other situations. How can ye being evil speak good things? For out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaketh. A good man out of the ground treasure of the heart bringeth forth good things. And an evil man out of the evil treasure bringeth forth evil things. But I say unto you that every idle word that man shall speak, they shall give an account thereof in the day of judgment. Every word you speak, you'll be judged for that. For by thy words thou shalt be justified, and for thy words thou shalt be condemned. Watch our words, right? Then certain of the scribes and of the Pharisees answered, saying, Master, we would see a sign from thee, right? They've already seen they just saw a man uh, with a withered hand healed in their, in their very own synagogue. They're, they're still seeking signs. A wicked, adulterous generation seeketh after a sign. So he says, an evil and adulterous generation seeketh after a sign. And there shall no sign be given to it but the sign of the prophet Jonas. For Jonas was three days and three nights in the whale's body. So shall the Son of Man be three days and three nights in the heart of the earth. Now, he's just reminding them about the story of Jonah, right? Now, when you talk about Santa Claus or the Easter Bunny, right? You know, and you want to teach a doctrinal lesson, you're going to, you know, from the light, from the story of Santa, story of the Easter Bunny, any other uh, mythology, right? You would go ahead and tell the story. Just because you tell the story of Jonah being swallowed by, a, and, and this is the first we get well, right? Because Jonah himself just says big fish, right? So. If he, if you get swallowed, you know, if we talk about it, right, it doesn't mean that Jesus is saying that really happened, that he really was swallowed by a big, by a big whale, right? Uh, we looked at that when we did Jonah, right? He was swallowed by something, right? And uh, uh, and it's it's tough in a situation like this uh, because we do know that people are coming and going when it comes to these lessons. So uh, a lot of you by now probably don't have the doctrinal background, don't have the to, to, to be going into too much to look at it now, but you can go back and watch our video about Jonah and see what it was that swallowed Jonah, right? It's not some big fish. Don't be ridiculous, you know. So just because Jesus says that doesn't mean it was really a big fish, right? He's telling the story as they know the story to teach the doctrine here that just as Jonah was in this thing for three days and three nights, which literally did happen, just wasn't a big fish. <laughs> uh, but 
uh, he was in this object for three days and three nights, hint, 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 right? As he's in this object for three days and three nights, so shall the Son of Man be in the earth for three days and three nights and then come back out of it just like Nona did. The men in Nineveh shall rise up, the ones that Jonah then went to and preached, and they repented after the shortest sermon in the history of the world. And the men of Nineveh shall rise in judgment of this generation and shall condemn it because they repented at the preaching of Jonah's. And behold, a greater one than Jonas is here, the Messiah, the prophet of Messiah is here. The queen of the south shall rise up in the judgment with this generation and shall condemn it. For she came the, for the Ethiopian queen, right? Uh, she came from the uttermost parts of the earth to hear the wisdom of Solomon. And behold, the greater than Solomon is here. He was a mighty king, the wisest man in the history of the world. But the Messiah is here. When the unclean spirit is gone out of a man, he walketh through dry places seeking rest and findeth none, because he is desperate and determined to possess a human body. That was his uh, punishment, that he would never have a human body. So they like to possess human bodies. So when they come out of a human body, they walk through dry places, and they want to go back and, and possess that same body again. Seeking rest and findeth none. Then he saith in 44, I will return into my house from whence I came out. And when he is come, he findeth it empty, swept, and garnished. So they cleaned it up in the meantime. Then goeth he and taketh with himself seven other spirits more wicked than himself. We looked at this uh, before too. Just as there are different levels of glory, there are different levels of hell. And just as there are one person more righteous than another and so forth till you come up to the Lord Jesus Christ who is more intelligent and more holy uh, uh, than than everyone else. Uh, so you would have a, uh, uh, spirits worse, and, you know, more evil and more evil and more evil. So th this one will go and get seven spirits more wicked than himself and they enter in and dwell there. So now that body's being possessed once again because they didn't repent of their sins, did not come back to Jesus Christ, even though they'd had the devil cast out of them. And so now the sub and now the seven with this with this one, so eight evil spirits go and they uh, dwelled therein. And the last state of that man is worse than the first. Remember we saw that story a couple of weeks ago here where. Uh, legion, for we are many. This per person got possessed with 2,000 because two th Jesus cast them out of that guy, and they possess the swine, and they go down and drown 2,000. So you can go from eight, uh, being possessed by eight spirits. Uh, you start with one. <laughs> you don't repent. And you, it gets worse. You get to eight. I guess you get worse and worse. You get to 2,000, as we uh, see here in the gospel. And... Uh, uh, and so shall it be also unto this wicked generation. They are going to be possessed by the devil. While he yet talked to the people, behold, his mother and his brethren stood without desiring to speak with him. I looked at this uh, in one of the other gospels, right? His, three, of his, three of his brethren are apostles, members of the 12. Where should they be? They should be at the feet of Jesus listening to him, right? <laughs> Instead, they're not. They're not attending church this week, right? Neither is his mother, right? So the three brothers, you know, three, so his brothers show up. We assume the three are there among his four brothers. Uh, one never did get called to be an apostle, as far as we know, if the records are complete. Uh, so you get the brethren showing up here and the mother showing up, and they desire to speak with you. But he answered and said to him, that told him, who is my mother and who are my brothers? And he stretched forth his hand toward his disciples and said, behold, my mother and my brethren, right? Those who were there listening to his, him, listening to his preaching. Remember with the story of Mary and Martha, where uh, you have the uh, Martha going around serving and, and so forth. And Mary sitting at his feet, listening to the gospel. And Jesus said, the one go, listening to the gospel it was more important than the one out trying to serve and thinking they were living a Christ-like life by, by serving, preparing dinner, and so forth uh, for others. For whosoever shall do the will of my Father, 
which is in heaven, the same as my brother and sister and mother. You want to be a brother of Christ. You want to be the mother of Christ. Uh, you want to be a sister of Jesus Christ. Just do his will, live his commandments, and he shall recognize you as such. What a mighty blessing that is. That looks at Matthew for today. We will now move to Luke chapter 11. Okay, Luke chapter 11, and we're going to skip some of it because, once again, we just looked at the Matthew's version of some of these stories. Luke 11, 1 through 4. And it came to pass that as he was praying in a certain place, when he ceased, one of his disciples said unto him, Lord, teach us to pray. As John also taught his disciples, John taught his disciples how to pray. How come, Jesus, you haven't taught us how to pray yet? Teach us how to pray, please. So he says, okay, I'm going to teach you. And he said unto them, when ye pray, say, our Father which art in heaven. Right? So we address our Heavenly Father. We don't pray to Jesus. Uh, there are some who claim to be Christians who think that you pray to Jesus Christ. You do not pray to Jesus Christ. You pray in the name of Jesus Christ while addressing the Heavenly Father. Hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. You pray that his gospel and his, his church will which is his kingdom on the earth, will continue to grow and expand until it covers the whole earth. Thy will be done, and as in heaven, so in the earth. Give us this day our daily bread. So you are okay to pray for your temporal needs. And forgive us our sins, for we also forgive everyone that is indebted to us. We've seen many scriptures on that, that the forgiveness is conditional. God will forgive you as you forgive one another. You don't forgive one another. Scripture very clear. God will not forgive you. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. So pray that God will help you through the temptations in life. We see from Paul in Corinthians uh, that God will not allow you to be tempted uh, more than what you're able, but will still prepare a way for you to escape. So you need to pray uh, for God to help you with that. And he said unto them, which of you shall have a friend? Let's see. We're going to look at this part here. Uh, yeah, 5 through 13. He said, which of you shall have a friend and shall go unto him at midnight and say unto him, friend, lend me three loaves. For a friend of mine is in his journey and has come to me, and I have nothing to set before him. And he from within shall answer and say, trouble me not. The door is now shut. And my children are with me in bed. I cannot rise and give thee. I say unto you, though he will not rise and give him, because he is his friend, yet because of his importunity, his continual asking, will he rise and give him as many as he needeth. So, you know, even if God's sleeping when you're trying to, to plead with him, the point is you keep pleading with him, and he will answer your prayers. For everyone that asketh receiveth, and he that seeketh findeth, and to him that knocketh it shall be opened. If a son shall ask bread of any of you that is a father, will he give him a stone? No, of course not. If your kid asks you for bread, you're not going to give him a stone. Or if he asks for a fish, will you give him a serpent instead? No. Or if he shall ask an egg, will he give him a scorpion? If ye then, being evil, know how to give good gifts unto your children, how much more shall your Heavenly Father give the good gifts to them that ask him? Check JST here. The Father give good gifts.